بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I welcome you to another episode of our series السفرة الكرام where we strive to be in the company of the holy angels by perfecting our recitation of the Quran by learning the science of Tajweed as usual we'd like to start off our show with an interesting fact about the Quran and in our last episode we had discussed that the Quran uh, has actually been revealed in different ahruf and these ahruf have been preserved in various qiraat or various ways of reciting the Quran and we mentioned that there are 10 such ways in which the Quran is recited uh, now we said that uh, for the most part these are only memorized by advanced students of the Quran by advanced students of Tajweed who go to specialized institutions and in these institutions they are taught poems which have been written uh, which compile all of these 10 qiraat of the most famous of these poems is the Shatibiya by the famous scholar uh, Qasib ibn Ahmad al-Shatibi he was from the uh, Muslim Spain he died in the year 548 Hijri this poem compiles seven of the most famous qiraat there's another poem Al-Tayyiba by uh, Muhammad ibn al-Jazari who died in the 9th century and in this poem he compiled all of the 10 qiraat just to give an example of what really a uh, qiraat is or what are the difference, some of the differences for example in Surah Ma'idah verse 6 Allah Azza wa Jal says يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِذَا قُمْتُمْ إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ فَاغْسِلُوا وُجُوهَكُمْ وَإِذِيَكُمْ إِلَى الْمَرَافِقِ وَامْسَحُوا بِرُؤُوسِكُمْ وَأَرْجُوا لَكُمْ With a fatha on the lam, أَرْجُوا لَكُمْ This is found in the qira'ah of Hafs and some other qira'at uh, that we recite. In other qira'at, the lam has a kasra and we say أَرْجُوا لِكُمْ Now without going into too much detail, basically the difference in meaning would be that in one qira'ah, Allah Azza wa Jal is telling us that when we do wudu, we have to wash our faces and hands and wipe the head and then wash the feet which is how we do wudu all the time we wipe the head we don't wash it with water we just put our hands over it and then we wash the feet the other qira'a however tells us to wipe the feet and not to wash them is this a contradiction? no rather this shows you the beauty of the Quran it further illustrates the miraculous nature the power of the Quran because we all know that when we for example wear socks or wear some type of covering and we have wudu we don't have to wash the feet rather we're allowed to wipe, wipe over wipe the feet over. and this is so beautiful when you study the different qiraat you study the different ways of reciting the Quran all of which go back to the Prophet wasallam. you find that each one complements the other each one adds a meaning that the other has not added and this is the beauty of the qiraat which is appreciated by every single student of the Quran who studies these qiraat. So don't think that there is a lot of contradiction there's a, or there are a lot of differences. No, each qiraat adds another meaning, adds another beautiful aspect which uh, one of them uh, did not do. Returning to our lesson, we were discussing the exceptions in uh, the qira'ah of Hafs, which is the qira'ah that we recite, what are the exceptional circumstances, the exceptional rules that go against the general rules that we studied. And this is the part two of the exceptions. The first that we're going to discuss today is something called an imala. Okay? An imala means to produce a sound which is between the alif and the ya. So it's between the alif and the ya. It's not an alif. Uh, it's not a ya. E, it's rather in between okay and there's only one word in the entire Quran where we do an imala and that is in Surah Hud verse 41 let us open up Surah Hud verse 41 and let us see how to pronounce this imala Surah Hud is verse uh, is the Surah number 11 verse 41 Notice if you look at it, if you turn to verse 41 of Surah 11, Surah Hud, وَقَالَ ركبوا فِيهَا بِسْمِ اللَّهِ Look over here, there's always a special sign. In most Qurans it is like a diamond underneath the majraha, right? If you were to not know what an imala is, you would say majraha, but that's a mistake. You have to pronounce it with an imala. An imala is pronounced as this, majraha, majraha. So we will pronounce the verse like this. وَقَالَ ارْكَبُوا فِيهَا بِسْمِ اللَّهِ مَجْرِيهَا وَمُرْسَاهَا مَجْرِيهَا وَمُرْسَاهَا مَجْرِيهَا مَجْرِيهَا It's not a majri, majra, no, it's in between. Majri. This is called an imala. And it only occurs once in the entire Qur'an. Yet another exception 
is known as the tasheel of the hamza, which means that you pronounce a hamza in between an alif and a a hamza in between it. Okay, so it's close to a ha sound if you like. Uh, it is only occurs in one uh, word again, Surah Fussilat, verse 44. Let us turn to this exception. Surah Fussilat, verse 44. Surah Fussilat is Surah number 41 in the Quran. Surah number 41, verse 44. Okay, here uh, we find Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَلَوْ جَعَلْنَاهُ قُرْآنًا أَعْجَمِيًّا لَقَالُوا لَوْ لَفُصِّلَتْ آيَاتُهُ Now notice, أَعْجَمِي you notice that the second Hamza typically would have a dot on it. To show you, you don't pronounce it as a Hamza. You don't say, A'ajami. Rather, you pronounce it as follows. A'ajami. A'ajami. You don't pronounce it a full Hamza. And you don't pronounce it as full an alif. alif. Full alif. It is in between. وَلَوْ جَعَلْنَاهُ قُرْآنًا أَعْجَمِيًا لَقَالُوا لَوْ لَا فُصِّلَتْ آيَاتُهُ so we have A'jami. It is not a pure Hamza and it is not a pure, pure Alif. It is in between. This is known as Tasheel. So this is another exceptional rule which must be memorized and there is no other place like it in the entire Quran. There is one last exception. Uh, and this is that in some cases in the Quran you are allowed to pronounce a scene and Asad or Asad depending on whatever you want to do and there are a number of places where you can do this uh, there are two places Surah Baqarah and Surah A'raf these two verses where the Quran is actually written with Asad but it is preferred to use a scene instead okay let us look up Surah Baqarah verse 245 Surah Baqarah verse 245 the ending of the verse Wallahu yaqubidu. Now notice in the Quran there is a sod, above that sod is a small scene. Sim. What is the purpose of this scene? It is to tell you that it is preferred to pronounce it with a scene. So you don't say Wallahu yaqubidu wa yabu sultu. You don't say so. Rather you say Wallahu yaqubidu wa yabu sultu wa ilayhi turja'oon. Wallahu yaqbidu wa yabsutu yabsutu You don't say with the sad Even though you're allowed to but the scene is preferred over here And the same applies to Surah A'raf verse 69 If you can quickly turn to that It is the exact same uh, word even uh, in a different form Surah A'raf verse number 69 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says If you look in the middle of the verse وَزَادَكُمْ فِي الْخَلْقِ Basta. You don't say basta. If you did, it's not a mistake, but it is preferred to say وَزَادَكُمْ فِي الْخَلْقِ بَسْطَ بَسْطَ Okay, so you don't pronounce it as a sod, you pronounce it as a seen, even though it is written as a sod. And in order to show you that, the people who wrote the Quran, they have, the mushaf and the printers, they have added a small scene to tell you to do so. Another exception is Surah Tur, verse 37. Surah Tur is Surah number 49 in the Quran. If you turn to verse 37, 52. you find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, says, أَمْ عِنْدَهُمْ خَزَائِنُ رَبِّكَ أَمْ هُمُ الْمُصَيْطِرُونَ Notice the sad has a small scene, but this time it is beneath it. So this is to show you, you can use a scene here, but it's, a sad is preferred. It is better to pronounce it as a sod. Okay? And that is why the scene has been placed below the sod, unlike in the case of Surah Baqarah and Surah A'raf, where the scene was it's above above it. Okay? So we pronounce this as and we're allowed to, but it is not preferred to say Musaytirun. This is the one that is not preferred, but it is allowed. And there is one last exception, and that is in Surah Ghashiyah. All of you know, in Surah Ghashiyah is in the last Jews of the Quran. In Surah Ghashiyah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in uh, verse number 22, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَسْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ بِمُصَيْطِرٍ Now some Qur'ans have a scene underneath and some don't. Either way the sod is preferred. Okay? 
but it is allowed to use a scene. لَسْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ بِمُصَيْطِرْ بِمُصَيْطِرْ And a scene is allowed, but it is not preferred. بِمُسَيْطِرْ Okay, but the sad is what has been given preference. So these are the exceptions, and we have completed all of them. These are the exceptions. These must be memorized. There is no rule here. It's just memorize these exceptions, and then you move on. Uh, we will practice, recite. Uh, let us go to Surah Fusilat, the same Surah that we uh, showed this example from of the Tasheel. Let us practice, recite this one. Let us turn to verse number 41. <coughs> okay, repeat after me. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الذين كفروا بالذكر لما جاءهم وإنه لكتاب عزيز إن الذين كفروا بالذكر لما جاءهم وإنه لكتاب عزيز لا يأتيه الباطل من بين يديه ولا من خلفه لا يأتيه الباطل من بين يديه ولا من خلفه تنزيل من حكيم حميد تنزيل here I'd like to point out a very common mistake. لا يأتيه الباطل Okay, many times you hear people say الباطل This is a mistake because they think that the alif is followed by a ta, which is of the heavy letters حروف التفخيم. So they make the alif heavy. It is very common to hear people say الباطل الباطل. But this is a mistake because what do you look at when you decide whether to make the alif heavy or light? Preceding letter. The letter before it, the letter preceding it. Not the letter after it. The letter after it does not play a role in the heaviness and lightness of the alif. The alif. So over here, لا يأتيه الباطل باطل. You don't say باطل. And this is a very common mistake because people think that the ta after it will affect the alif. Uh, what did we do with the mim baini? What is the ruling Iqlab. here? Conversion. Iqlab, because there is a noon second followed by, by a ba. Wala min khalfihi. What do we do with noon second here? It's hard. It's hard because there is a kha uh, after it. Tanzilum. What is here? Tanwin with ghunna. Idgham with ghunna because there is a tanwin followed by a meme. Min hakim would be what? Idhar. And hakim min hamid once again is idhar. ما يقال لك إلا ما قد قيل للرسل من قبلك ما يقال لك إلا ما قد قيل للرسل من قبلك إن ربك لذو مغفرة وذو عقاب أليم إن Okay, here uh, we have min qablik. What is the ruling on the min? Ikhfa, <laughs> because it's followed by a qa, oh. and we have a qablik a qalqala yes. on the ba. In rabbak, we have gunna on the noon mm-hmm. because it is mushaddad. Ladu maghfiratin. How about the ra? Muraqqaq or mufakham? Mufakham. It'll be heavy. It'll be heavy because it is. It has a on it. Again, this is a common mistake. Maghfira, maghfira. No, it is maghfira. Tim wadu bin alim. The tanwin will have the bhar because there is an alif there. With this, we come to the conclusion of today's episode. Inshallah, in our next episode, we're going to have a very special guest. We're going to have a very famous qadi come and recite the Quran, and we will analyze uh, the tajweed rules from his voice. So please tune in next time. Until then, assalamu alaikum. ورحمة الله وبركاته